So October Rest. Mm. When that record becomes a success and you're planning on writing this record, I feel like I already know the answer is no, but I'm still gonna ask you. Did you feel like pressure at all? Like, oh, this one needs to be more successful? Oh, or do you just told the pressure. We were pressured directly by Chase, the president of Roadrun. He said, I need more singles. <laughs> this was Peter's ideas of singles. <laughs> Did you feel at all like... We were sure Be My Jew this would be the biggest single ever. <laughs> I mean, you know, one thing I could say for Peter is that, like, when he created, it was always just, with no fear, whatever came out of him. This is it. We've tried to get him to change many lyrics and different <laughs> kinds of lines before, and then he would just make me sing the lyrics. <laughs> 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 uh, we gave up, like... <laughs> <laughs> so, um... I, I can't say that he was trying to write singles, but this is his idea of that, you know what I mean? Of trying to write more, I mean, he just went more for melody, I think, in layering. But I think, you know, whatever he had, like... It's still dense. I mean, it's all dense. That's, yeah. That's the band. Whatever he had preconceived before we sat down, started writing for it, I think once he starts writing, you know, Peter just, he, he always just, he just completely wrote fearlessly and whatever came out of it, you know, which, to me, is an amazing thing. That's the soul. Do you ever try to write something and just you second guess it, third guess it, fourth guess it? Every so time. So punching you in the face, time. eating yourself in the face, three o'clock in the morning. He didn't. Over and over again. He was just like, this Confident. is it. Confident. You know what I mean? But Peter, these lyrics are retarded. <laughs> you sing them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's a brilliant record, you know, but... Um, I forget what song it was. It was when we were working on this, and uh, I was like, five, Peter, five normally, it's like normally I can identify with what you what you have to say, you know. Like, what, like, Wolf Moon? <laughs> I, 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 normally I can. I, hey, he just like <laughs> that's a. He does, I, I was like, and I was like, Peter, I just, I, I just don't get it with these lyrics. And he, he I remember storming out of Josh's house. He got so pissed so off. So he does me. like, a, he does like an interview with some French magazine. Oh, this song, it's a Wolf Moon. It's so deep. It has. Such meaning. What is this about, Peter? Oh, it's about a uh, man turning into a werewolf when having cunnilingus with a woman. At, <laughs> when, when she's, she's menstruating. When she's menstruating. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh. <laughs> That's what was great about his songwriting, because like you could take something as so layered and so textured and stuff like that, and then that's the subject matter. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's, That's it's, the great yeah. part about it. It's that line, <laughs> yeah. that same line. Yeah. We know Pete, Tim T asks, we know Pete would compose the basic idea for a song, but how would the rest of the band help flesh out the rest of the composition? Uh, a lot of it, you know, it developed as he jammed in the studio. He'd come up with an idea. The first, like, so deep and hard he had, like, it was pretty hardcore set in stone. I mean, yeah, I added vocals and stuff like that, you know. I ended up being part of the singing part of it. And then, Black Number One, a lot of it came out of experimentation in the studio, you know. But, like, he, Peter would have pretty much a blueprint of the whole song. So you would add whatever, whatever, the rhythm, rhythm section, you know, Sal would add his drums, I'd add my guitar work and vocals. Josh would add his key, keyboards, keyboard solos, all that stuff. The most Peter was prepared with me in the band was when he did October Ross. That yeah. was his most prepared, where yeah. he had like actually like, like yeah. Love You To Death was a written song. And when he showed it to us and yeah. stuff, and the, a lot of the record was like that. Some of the stuff was added later on, like Red Water and Girl, Girlfriend's Girlfriend was like the last thing to be written. Wow. You know? Hmm. And wow. those were done in the studio. Like they were never played. The band never played Red Water, ever. You know, it was just created in the studio, and that that was it. Were you guys kind of allotted the freedom to always pepper things, or sometimes yes. just oh, always? Yeah, yeah, yeah almost absolutely. always. Yeah. yeah, like he would say, "You got to sing this part. It's out of my range." So I would do it, and I'd do whatever I wanted, you know, with it. That's awesome. Like doing yeah. like upbeats. Like you'd put like an upbeat, yeah, uh, upbeat it, that would, at first it would freak him out. Cause he liked everything. Like for, as like, you know, as textured and all that stuff, it, everything needed to be linear. That's so right. if you did anything that was kind of like an upbeat or like a stop or something like that, you threw it in and be like, what was that? 
But then, like, you know, like, then he would, he'd be okay with it, like, you know, whatever, figure it out, and then he would adjust his bass playing for it or whatnot, and, you know. But then also a lot of the earlier stuff, like, especially Still Deep and Hard, and especially Origin and Feces, like, you know, with the Hey Pete cover and all that, like, a lot of the stuff we were playing it live at the time, and it changed. Not so much Slow Deep and Hard, but uh, Origin and Fishy changed the way he played it, you know, so, like, definitely, like, uh, he embraced, like, everybody's take on it, and, you know, it turned it to a different animal. Sometimes he would have very specific things that Yeah. Happened. That had this, that needed this stay. Yeah. It's gotta be this way. Well, you at least, like, oh, you know, cool. you'd at least try it, you know? Yeah. And if it worked, great. If it didn't work, you tried something else. Why, why were covers such like an integral part of the discography? Is that like something he would, would kind of... He'd always love covers, you know, even in Kono into covers. So like, you know, it was a certain artist he was very attached to. You know, I mean, not that he was attached to Seals and Croft that much. <laughs> <laughs> would you guys like uh, agree with the covers or was it just like, this is what we're doing? No, no, no. We would, oh, like he would we would have a lot of suggestions of covers. Like we, we did, we try to do uh, Adora's cover. We try to do what? Come on, baby, light my fire. Oh, yeah. It didn't work out. It was horrible. Like we would do a number of covers, <laughs> and we were like, "This is not working." <laughs> and I think some of them would come through, and it would work. You know. And yeah, like Cinnamon Girl came from playing it live, and then he was like, "I want to put it on the record." So he did. It changed up a little bit from what it was originally, how it was originally played, but it, you know, the basic idea was there. But it's, it, I, a lot of it comes from Peter hating to play his own music, and he was like, oh, they don't, need, they don't know any of these songs, let's play a cover. <laughs> and like yeah, force no. us to work on a cover for a tour, you know what I mean? Sometimes we'd open up with Pink Floyd, or you know, we'd, we'd put some other parts in. Sometimes it would work. If it worked with an audience, said, yeah, we'd take it further, you know? Ended up recording it. My two favorite typo covers are, um, the Beatles medley and, and Hey Pete. Those are my two favorites. Yeah. Beatles medley is my favorite.